21, Elder Joseph the Hesychist arrived on Athos at the invitation of God and his all-holy mother. His desire was to become a man of God. He had been born Frangiscus Cotus in Lefkis, almost in the middle of the small, quiet, enchanting island of Paros in the Cycladis on the 2nd of November, 1897. The family's small house was in the village. Frangiscos lived there for some 17 years. His parents, Iorios Cotis and Maria Ragusi, were poor but rich in their devout, modest, and virtuous life. They had eight children. His father didn't live to see his children have families of their own. He died young at the age of 40 in 1907, when Frangiscos was 13 years old. His wife took over the responsibility of bringing up and educating the many children. They came from a long line of clergy, including Christ-loving and virtuous monks, who had adorned Paros with monasteries and churches. Within this background, Frangiscos' spiritual world was formed with all the pure traditional elements of the Church – faith, humility, love, sincerity, plain speaking, honor, and cheerful goodwill. Ο πατέρας του τον ταπείνωνε πάρα πολύ και αυτό σε δεχόταν με τόσον πόθον τον εξευτελισμό, την παρατήρηση που αυτό το πράγμα δείχνει ότι ήταν από μικρός φωτισμένος. If he did something wrong and they berated him, Frangiscos humbly bowed his head and asked forgiveness. In this way, he transformed the anger of others into affection. At his birth, it was revealed to his mother that the child would later be dedicated to God. When he was 12 years old, his mother took Frangiscos to the monastery of St. Antonios of Marisa, and there he received the blessing of Father Abimelech, who prophesied to his mother that he would become an important person, a man of Christ. He remained in Lefkis until his teenage years. He attended the newly built boys' primary school of Ramnos, close to his home. He completed only the first two classes of primary school and thereafter helped his father in the struggle to make a living for the family. his teenage years, his father was no longer with him. In order to help his mother, he moved to Pirias at the age of 17 and worked at Lavrio, mainly in the mines. Και 
και βλέπετε ο ίδιος ο οποίο ήρθε από έφηβος στην Αθήνα και άρχισε ήταν άνθρωπος έξυπνος ήταν άνθρωπος ο οποίο το έλεγε η καρδιά του δεν φοβότανε παρόλο που ήρθε σε έναν τόπο άγνωστο εν τούτης όμως αγωνιζόταν He was there for a year before joining the Royal Navy to do his national service. On his return to civilian life, he started work as a tram conductor and later became involved in commerce. Ο παππούς μας ο Ιωσήφ, όταν ήταν νέος, τα έφερε έτσι η πρόνοια του Θεού να αραβωνιαστεί. Μας κάνει εντύπωση το πώς διήγε με τόση ακρίβεια, με τόση καθαρότητα, που ούτε ακάντη να σπάστηκε την αραβωνιαστικιά του. Όμως τα έφερε πάλι πρόνε του Θεού και η κοπέλα αυτή εκοιμήθη. Τότε αισθάνθηκε τη ματιότητα, αισθάνθηκε ότι όλα είναι προσωρινά που λέμε και στην ακολουθία της εξωδίου ακολουθίας πάντα ματιότητα στα ανθρώπινα. Πάντα ματιότητα After this happened, by God's grace, he was granted the sense of the vanity of this world and the power that comes with contempt for everything temporal. He didn't give another thought to anything of this world. This feeling was strengthened completely by the Lord himself through this sign. One night, when he was asleep, he had a dream. He was walking past a palace, and two officers of the guard appeared. He objected mildly. They spoke to him in a friendly manner. Don't worry. It's what the king wants. They took him into the palace. They dressed him in a fine uniform and said to him, You'll be serving here now. From then on, I always heard this inner voice as if this command were being repeated the whole time. You'll be serving here now. Πήγαιναν στην Μπεντέλη και καθόταν πάνω στα δέντρα, σε σπηλιές και αγωνιζόταν και αυτό ήταν μια προθέρμαση για την άσκησή του στο Άγιον Όρος. Γι' αυτόν είναι μεγάλο πράγμα ο πόθος που είχε και είναι μεγάλο πράγμα ο ζήλος που είχε. Αυτά δεν τα βρίσκει σε πολλούς. Είναι ο πόθος και η πνευματική διάθεση των ελαχίστων, των ολίγων. Πολύ εκλητή, ολίγη δε η εκλεκτή. He would go up to Pendeli and visit the Velis' cave and the prayerful chapels of St. Spiridon and St. Nicholas. His yearning overflowed there with the unspoken sighs of his silence, with his unceasing prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me. He read books on the lives of the saints and he began thinking more about life beyond this world. He was very loving and didn't neglect the virtue of giving alms. At the same time, he went to various shrines to reinforce his faith and repentance.
he visited the icon of Our Lady of Tinos, where miracles regularly occur. When he was a young man in the Panagia of Tinos, he saw the Christ and said, I will not have a small miracle here, but I want to be able to help you. The marked the beginning of his acquaintance with the Holy Mountain. He was 24 years old. He made the decision to live in the harshest environment on Athos. In these places he could labor harder and show God his love for him. He didn't want to be a lukewarm monk, but an ascetic filled with the divine flame on a quest for the grace of God. Τον ενέπρευσε το γέρον τον παππού μας, ο γύρο Δανιήλ, ότι του είπε το έκανε αμέσως, το έκανε πράξη. Ο Δανιήλ ήταν ένα σοφός άνθρωπος. Ένα σοφός άνθρωπος ήταν. Και άκουσε και ήρθε και πετάχτηκε στον γύρο Δανιήλ. Αλλά ο γύρο Δανιήλ ήταν και νοβιά της. Και έλαβε φραγγίες και να βοηθήσει ανάγνωση. Ο γύρο Δανιήλ ήταν τότε σμάνθανε τα γράμματα και διάβαζε και τον παίρνανε τα κλάματα. At Katunakia, he met the scholarly, conscientious, spiritual and experienced ascetic Elder Daniil of Katunakia, the founder of the devout brotherhood of the Danileon. Frangiscos received exhortations from him concerning the spiritual life to prepare him to become a man of God, to cast off the old man which is corrupted by all manner of wickedness and to strive to clothe himself in God. Soon after, he went to live in the wilderness of Athos, in the peaceful surroundings of Vigne, with the aim of leading a stricter life. He wanted to find a more permanent dwelling and to meet spiritual hermits for his own spiritual benefit so that he could embark on the traditional Hesychus life of the Holy Mountain. When he came to Athos, he was a Alexander. He was a Alexander to go there with them. Λέει, όχι πατέρας, δεν κοιτάω που υπάρχει άνες, για τούτο ήρθα εδώ. He covered the entire holy mountain, searching from cave to cave, hollow to hollow, in the hope of discovering an unknown virtuous ascetic. that experienced and virtuous friends of God were hard to find. to fill it with pain and the divine wine of love. All I have to give you is tears which my soul pours forth as you so desire. He lived for a time in caves. He is here την οποία να σκούσε, δεν ήταν μια εξωτερική κατάσταση της απλώς ησυχίας εξωτερικής. Ήταν εξωτερική κατάσταση ησυχία, η οποία βέβαια βοηθείται και από τα εξωτερικά γεγονότα. Αλλά 
Η ησυχία του γέροντο Ισύφη ήταν αυτό ότι στην καρδία του δεν ήθελε να υπάρχει τίποτα άλλο και κανένα άλλο και τίποτα ανθρώπινο παρά μόνο ο Χριστό. Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and broad the path that leads to perdition. And many are they who enter through it. The path that leads to life is narrow and full of sorrows, and few are they who find it. At first he lived in the cave of Saint Athanasius. He struggled mightily, fasting and keeping vigil. He wanted so much to acquire the prayer of the heart. For six months he begged for it to be given to him, all the while seeking to imitate the spiritual fathers. He kept vigil for eight days and nights with neither food nor sleep. Then he went on to the caves of St. Peter the Athenite and St. Nilos the Murgiver. However, he didn't find a spiritual guide who was experienced in extreme hesychia in the prayer of the heart. The demons are the ones that are the ones that are the ones that are the ones that are the και το Ευαγγέλιο να αποδεικνύει την ύπαρξη των δαιμόνων. Τα πάθη είναι αυτά τα οποία έχουμε εμεί μέσα μα. Οι δαίμονες γνωρίζουν τα πάθη μα και κινούν τα πάθη μα εναντίον μα για να μα καταποντήσουν μέσα στην άβυσσο τη αμαρτία. Frustrated and bereft of any human assistance, he came under attack from the demons. What you're looking for doesn't exist. Go back. Coming here was a waste of time. What do you want to do? You're alone, in danger. You won't last. Nobody will help you. He was back at Vigla and the elder who was living with him temporarily behaved badly in some way. Frangiscos withdrew to a place where he often prayed and began to entreat God in tears. In the evening, after sunset, he was exhausted and gazed at the church on top of Athos with tears in his eyes and prayed. A bright ray of light came from the Church of the Transfiguration and touched him. Σαν ακτίνα ήρθε από τον Εκκλησία της πάνω του και άρχισε να λειτουργεί μέσα του ευχή. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me. He saw two selves. He saw his outer self and another within, repeating the prayer with mathematical precision like a clock. Amazingly, it continued without any effort on his part. After this supernatural intervention, Elder Daniel urged him to beware and not to live completely alone as he wished to do. Rather, he should find another monk to live with him, because the dangers from the demons are enormous for those who live entirely alone. The courageous young man had no fear. What will they do to me? he asked the elder. I've got the prayer now. Very well, replied the elder. Go to the cave now by yourself and we'll find you a companion. First, 
you have to rid yourself of any earthly thing or relationship. Make sure you bear the sorrows and the temptations in the wilderness for the sake of his love. There's no sin that can't be forgiven except that for which there's no repentance. And no gift of God is without abundance unless it is one for which we don't thank him. One afternoon, as he was saying the Jesus prayer, a wild beast appeared and revealed to him how powerless man is. His limbs were paralyzed with fear. His courage deserted him. And it was the first time he realized just how terrible and dangerous the action of the enemy is. of bushes. He would take them to the monasteries and was given dry bread rusks in return. I first heard the nightingale one morning on Athos. Fresh water was running somewhere near Canisia, and I saw how sorrows fade on the road of God, and again, the great lie of this sorrowful world. Another time, at daybreak, I burst into tears at the sound of the day, and the light came and kissed my falling tear and the breeze caressed it. In 1923, on the day of the Feast of the Holy Transfiguration of the Savior, he climbed to the peak of Athos with the other monks who were going to celebrate. There, he met Father Arsenios, who later became his inseparable companion and fellow ascetic. Father Arsenios came from the Pontus region of the Black Sea and was simple and guileless. Even though he was already a monk of the great habit, he submitted to young Franciscus, since he recognized the latter's spiritual state, his wisdom and divine zeal. Του είπε ο Γέρο Δανίλο ότι φραγκίσκε μην πλανάσαι, έχεις πόθο Θεού μεν, θέλεις να κάνεις ασκήσεις μεγάλες, έχεις καλές διαθέσεις, αλλά αν δεν υποταχθείς σε γέροντα μην πλανάσαι, δεν μπορεί να βρεις τίποτε απολύτως. Πρέπει να βρεις ένα γέροντα, να υποταχθείς, να θάψεις το γέροντά σου και τότε θα σε βοηθήσει ο Θεός ακολύτως να βρεις αυτά που θέλεις. Και ακριβώς μόλις του είπε αυτά που πρώτη φορά το άκουσαν ο παππούς, τότε αμέσως σε φωτίστη, βρήκαν το γέροντα Εφραίμ, το λεγόμενο Βαρελά, διότι γιορμάστην έτσι γιατί το εργόχειρο του είδε να κάνουν βαρέλια, πήγαινε εκεί, υποτάχθηκε και τότε πραγματικά έρθαν οι χάρη πάνω του, του επεσκίασε, διότι ήταν οι χάρη τη υπακοή που δεν άφηνε τον διάβολο να έρθει να του διαρρήξει και να του ισοπεδώσει, και τότε α πούμε επήραν τα χαρίσματα του Αγίου Πρέματο. Theophany, around midnight. Μεσάνυχτα να πούμε αυτό γίνεται ένα φως και είδε, τα, είδε τρία μικρά παιδάκια και ψέρανε ο Ιησούς Χριστόν εδώ της Χριστής.
Λόγω του ότι ήταν σε μεγάλο ένταση πνευματικού αγώνος και δεν είχαν ανθρώπινη παρηγοριά και αυτό ο Θεός στις έσχατες ώρες της ε, ε, εκλήψεως των δυνάμεων τους τους έδινε οράματα και εμπειρίες θεοφανίας για να τους παρηγορήσει και να τους στηρίξει στον αγώνα τους. Και τα οράματα είναι μετρημένα. Όλη η ζωή τους είχαν 10-15 οράματα, δεν είχαν κάθε μέρα οράματα. Αλλά όπως λέει και ο Γέροντας μας ο Ισύχος Ιχαστής, κατόπιν εξαντλητικής υπομονής ο Κύριος εφάνησε τον εαυτό του. Four years after his renunciation of the world, a deeply moved elder Ephraim made him a monk of the great habit with the name of Joseph. His tonsure took place in the cave of Saint Athanasios and was performed by the spiritual father who was living there. He was then 28 years old. He'd already acquired ascetic wisdom, spiritual experiences and revelations that are very rare even among experienced hermits. Omega Stratigos Tonai People disturbing their silence and detachment made it necessary for them to withdraw to the holy skeet of Saint Basil at the end of 1928. At Saint Basil's, however, they also encountered difficulties finding a place to settle. There were no vacant houses where they could live. They were forced to build themselves, though this was difficult in a place which lacked the necessary materials. After the repose of their elder, the two young monks would occasionally leave their makeshift huts and live entirely at liberty on Athos, free from all worldly cares and desires. All they owned was two thick capes each, which served as a covering and a blanket to sleep on, a small bag for their dry bread rusks and a small copper pan in which to boil any wild greens or bulbs they came across. That's all they took when they went out onto Athos. is 6,500 feet and the wind is fierce and strong. To shield themselves against it, they found windbreaks in ravines or caves. They would spread out their capes and spend the night as best they could. Sometimes they would stay in the chapel on the summit. After they had decided not to go from place to place, they remained in their hut and made wood carvings. In the hut, they observed silence, kept vigils, and lived ascetically and with restraint in order to seek 
divine grace. In the afternoon, they would rest for two or three hours and rise at sunset. The whole night they would say the Jesus prayer and then sleep for an hour or two until dawn. Then they would start work or leave to go somewhere until noon when they would eat their bread rusks. This program would then be repeated. When they had no more wheat, he would say to Father Arsenios, Father Arsenios, go up into the mountains now to collect wild chestnuts. Bring them back, we'll grind them and bake them so that we and the monks who were poor will have something to eat. He visited Elder Hieronymus in Egina and the sister of Father Arsenios, Sister Efpraxia, who looked after him. He spoke privately with Father Hieronymus and was the reason this virtuous man turned to hesychism. beginning of his renunciation of the world, he began his great supernatural struggles against the passions and the demons, from which he emerged victorious and untroubled by them. He became a teacher for his fellow monks and an intercessor for the whole world, hidden away in his rough little hut. Passions are part of the road traveled by the procession of wickedness in the world. Where the passions stop, so too does evil. Passions are the desire for wealth, indulgence of the body, and love of pleasure. The desire for honor, from which arises envy. The desire for power, human glory, which is the cause of resentment an excessive concern over the health of the body. When these cease, the world of the passions dies. He was asleep when a vivid vision shook him to the core. Monks and demons raged against each other. He was at the back, but then a monk led him into the front line. It seemed that he was expected to fight more or less alone. This vision, the demons wouldn't leave him alone for a minute. Neither by day nor by night. Every night was a furious battle. During the day, there were thoughts and passions. He couldn't sleep a wink. He couldn't avoid this savage warfare. Always be alone, like Christ, on Great Friday, awaiting the last nail. The vinegar, the spear. Sunday doesn't come before Friday. Then you forget the sufferings of the roads of Great Friday in your life. They are strong indeed who love sorrows, through which, with prayer and patience, they experience the glory of God and do not seek the pleasure of any transient sin.
The presence of the famous Hesychist Elder Daniel, who lived in the small house of St. Peter, just past Kriyanira, came as a blessing from Our Lady, the Mother of God, in his spiritual struggle. Papa Daniel was a real Hesychist, and almost a recluse. He was completely alone. Everyone thought he was deluded and didn't know what he was doing. And he had no one else to help and encourage him. This is why he avoided people and, for the most part, lived in his cave or in the wilderness. Ο παππούς ήταν υπέραγνος ως άνθρωπος, δεν είχε πέσει σε διάφορες πτώσεις όπως πέφτουν όλοι οι άνθρωποι. Ήταν πήγαινε εκεί ολοκάθαρος και αγνός μέσα στην μοναγική ζωή και όμως παρόλα τα αυτά τον επιλέμισε πολύ το δαιμόνιο της πορνείας. Και για 8 χρόνια ολόκληρα ήταν έτσι συνεχώς ήταν σε μια πίεση και σε μια εμπόλεμη πνευματική κατάσταση και στα 8 χρόνια του ήρθαν τότε η νέκρωση, η καθολική νέκρωση και πραγματικά η τελεία αγνία. One day, when he was alone and despairing at the intense presence of the passions and the evil spirits, he suddenly felt that the door behind him had opened. He didn't turn around to see it, but kept on saying the Jesus prayer. He sensed a troubling presence. He turned, and there was the demon of fornication. He wildly rushed to catch hold of him. When he did so, it had bristles like a boar. It disappeared. Η απάθεια όταν τα ακούει ένα σύγχρονο άνθρωπο θεωρεί ότι είναι η αναισθησία. Ενώ η απάθεια κατά την Ορθόδοξη Θεολογία και η Πατερική Γραμματεία είναι η απαλλαγή από τα πάθη. Δηλαδή δεν έχουν πάθη αυτοί οι άνθρωποι, δεν έχουν κακίε, δεν έχουν ιδιοτέλειε, δεν έχουν ιδιορυθμίε, δεν έχουν φιλοδοξία, δεν έχουν φιλαργυρία, δεν έχουν φιλιδονία. Και η απάθεια δεν είναι μόνο η απαλλαγή από τα αρχικά πάθη. Η απάθεια είναι η απαλλαγή από όλα τα πάθη. Μέγιστο πάθο είναι το πάθο τη αγάπη. Δηλαδή οι άγιοι, όταν λένε απάθη, εννοούν τον, ότι αδειάζουν από όλα τα πάθη και γεμίζουν με το πάθο τη αγάπη του Χριστού. Με αυτό το incident, after eight years, all warfare ceased and peace came to his soul. He was freed of all carnal inclinations. He received the prize of unblemished purity. Then, with inexpressible joy, he sang the ode of the prophet Moses. Και η νωρά προσευχή δεν είναι γιόγκα να κάνει κανείς τεχνικές μεθόδους για να βρει μια ισορροπία ψυχοσωματική. Είναι μια εξήτηση, διάπειρος εξήτηση του Θείου Ελέους. Αυτό στηρίζεται στα δάκρυα, στο πένθος, στη μετάνοια, στην προσευχή, στο έλεος του Θεού και πάνω απ' όλα στη χάρη του Θεού. Γι' αυτό γέροντας της Ιωσήφη έλεγε ότι ό,τι και αν κάνεις, ό,τι και αν πεις, αν ο Θεός δεν σε λέει, δεν κάνεις τίποτα. Δεν εξαρτάται από σένα, λέει, χάρης. Γι' αυτό λέγεται και χάρης, λέει, ότι δίδεται δωρεάν από τον Χριστό. Ήταν από το 1935. After 14 years of the monastic life, and at the age of 38, Elder Joseph had acquired experience of the ascetic life and the grace of the Holy Spirit. Various men began to come to him, wanting to become his disciples, some of whom were educated monks, others not. They were not able, however, to imitate him and pressed him to change his rule, but he simply couldn't abandon his struggles and the strict program of prayer. He felt that the presence of grace and of God himself were withdrawing. They left for the summit of Athos, vexed with people. entered the chapel of the transfiguration to venerate the icons 
The whole of the chapel was fragrant with the smell of three red apples in front of the icon of Our Lady. This was at a season when it would have been impossible for anybody to have left them there. They had been preceded by the love of God, which brought them solace in their struggles. returned to St. Basil's, but the problem remained. While he was praying with tears and pain, Christ appeared, nailed upon the cross, in the midst of light. He turned his head toward Joseph and said, Look at me, how much I suffered for your love. What have you suffered? But not everyone who encountered his teaching found it impossible to follow the path of hesychism. Among those who did was Papa Ephrem of Katanakia, who after 1935 at the Skeet of St. Basil was initiated by Elder Joseph into the mysteries of divine grace. <laughs> Δεν κατοικούσαμε μαζί. Κύριο σε μέρα στα κατ' ουρανιά, αλλά είμαι θα τόσο ενωμένη και αγαπημένη. Δεν είχε 15 χρόνια, περίπου 18 χρόνια, δεν είχε στο Άγιο Νόρο που ήταν νέο. Και απέκτησε διόραση, προόραση, προφητεία. Και ήταν ο Θανάη εκεί, θυρορό. Λέω: Θέλω να δω το γέροντα. Καλά. Πηγαίνει μέσα στο δωμάτιο, η γέροντα ήρθε ο παπά και θέλει να σε δει. Α έρθει, α έρθει. Πήγα μέσα κάθισα. Ναι, τι έχεις. Λέω, άφησε με να συνέρθω και θα σου πω ότι λέω. Θα σου πω. Ναι. Κάθισα, κάθισα. Λέω, γέροντα, εκεί που προσευχόμενα, είδα μακριά, δέκα μέτρα και ερχόζατε. Τρεις άνθρωποι, τρεις άνθρωποι ερχόζατε. Και μόλις ήρθαν, εγώ δεν κουνέμαι καθόλου, λέω, και μόλις ήρθαν. Ήρθα μπροστά μου και άνοιξε το γέρι και φίλησα τον Μεσαίο λέω. Ου, χαρά ο γέροντας, τώρα θα δεις τι θα πει χάρης, τώρα θα δεις τι θα πει αργός, τώρα θα πει τώρα και πέρα. Έλα, πατερασένια, τρέξε τα. Τα αυτά θυμάμαι και παρηγορούμε. Τα πήρα από τον γέροντα, τα ομολογεί ο ίδιος. Την χάρη αυτή του την έδωσε ο γέροντας. Ο Παπαφρέμ και τον Ακιώτης, ο οποίος πραγματικά αντέγραψε τον γέροντα Ιωσήφ τον Ισυχαστή και μπορώ να πω είναι ένας από αυτού που εμιμήθηκε και στον τρόπο του βίου του παππού διότι έζησε στην ουσία και αυτό εσείς στα κατονάκια ως ένας ησυχαστής. Και ήρθε ο γέροντας και είπε στο γέροντα του παπανικού ο, ο, ο Εφρέμ λέει κάνει υπακοή κάνει υπακοή α, δόξα σου, έλεγα, άκουσα και ένα λόγο πνευματικό και είπα να πέσουν να του προσκυνήσουν τα ποδάρια αλλά δεν μπορεί και έτσι μπορεί να πάνω και λέει αμάν το να ακούσει λίγο ένα λόγο πνευματικό μα. Η νηπτική ζωή με την ευχαριστιακή ζωή πάντοτε είναι ενωμένε και συμβαδίζουν. Γι' αυτό και επειδή έτυχε να γνωρίζει τον γέρον Νικηφόρο που ήταν ο τυπικό γέροντα του Παπαεφρέ, και ο Παπαεφρέ βέβαια ήταν αληθινά υποτακτικό του, αλλά όμω ήταν τυπικά σε άλλο γέροντα. His reputation as a great ascetic had spread, and so a lot of monks went to seek his advice which meant he lost his stillness and freedom from cares. This was the reason he decided, for the second time, to move from where they were. They went down to the narrowest caves in little St. Anne's Skeet, where it was almost impossible for anybody else to live with them. In January, they loaded their few belongings and books onto their backs and moved to two caves there. Elder 
of Joseph had already spent nine years at Little St. Anne's when a young man, who was later to become Elder Joseph of Vatopedi, joined their brotherhood in August of 1947. A short time later, there was a new addition in the shape of Yanakis from Volos, later to be Haram Then, in 1950, Elder Arsenios's nephew, Papa Harambos, arrived. The young monks who came to him were taught both together and individually about their monastic life. Θυμάμαι τον γέροντα μας που δίδασκε καμιά φορά. Σας λέω και σας υπόσχομαι. Εάν σε τρεις μήνες το υπέρτατο όριο επιμένει ο μοναχός στην ευχή και δεν υποχωρεί, αυτός θα κατακτήσει την ευχή ως, ως δικαίωμα του, ως χτήμα του. Στον Παπά Εφραίμ του έφερε σε ένα μήνα μόνο. Τον αδερφό μας που κοιμήθηκε. Τον άκουα λοιπόν όλη τη νύχτα και έκλαιγε και πήγε στον γέροντα γέροντα λέει ο Πατήρης εγώ όλη τη νύχτα να άκουα και έκλαιγε λέω από τότε στον κύριο και εγώ σε βλάβια περισσότερο. Ένα από τα μεγάλα χαρίσματα των πατέρων μας και γενικά ας πούμε της κλίμακας των χαρισμάτων είναι το χαρίσμα της πνευματικής πατρότητας το οποίο δίδεται σε ανθρώπους μεγάλης πνευματικής καταστάσεως κατά τον λόγο του Χριστού που είπε στον Απόστολο Πέτρο και εσύ ποτέ επιστρέψας στήριξαν τους αδερφούς σου. Και είναι αποστολικό χάρισμα, διότι οι Άγιοι Απόστολοι ήταν πατέρες. Πολύ ο Παύλος, οι γαρμυρίους παιδαγωγούς έχετε, αλλού πολλούς πατέρας. Διαγάρτω το Ευαγγελίο, εγώ είμαστε γέννησα. Ο Άλτερ ήταν ένας πραγματικός ασθέτης. Θα έρθει στο σάλ στο σάνσετ και δεν θα εμπλέξει μέχρι το πρόβλημα του πρόβλημα. In one of the caves, in the little chapel of St. John the Forerunner, they celebrated the liturgy three to four times a week. These liturgies were so blessed, so full of grace. Papa Ephraim of Katanakia served a liturgy there. The chapel gives off a fragrance to this day. Also, rare occasions when he wanted to visit the monasteries on the holy mountain to venerate the relics. He prayerfully attended the services and divine liturgies. Since his way of life was unique, it was once decided that he should be turned out of the caves. He had no consolation other than Our Lady. She herself had told him to set his hope on her. <laughs> Γι' αυτό και πάντοτε την έλεγε η μανούλα μου, η μανούλα μου. Γι' αυτό και προσέφευγε πολύ στην Παναγία, πάρα πολύ την παρακαλούσε. Είχε έναν τέτοιο έρωτα στην Παναγία που πολλές φορές τον επαρηγόρησε πολύ η Παναγία και μάλιστα σε μια στιγμή της ζωής του που είχε πολύ μεγάλο πειρασμό από τον διάβολο, τότε ήρθε να του εφανερώθηνε η Παναγία, με ζωντάνεψε και του είπε «Δε σου είπα να έχει την ελπίδα μου σε μένα» και τότε άλλαξαν όλα μέσα του και ήρθε πάρει ένας θείος έρωτας με θεία ειρήνη, μια θεία αγάπη που πραγματικά η καρδιά του χωρούσε όλη την οικουμένη. sat in his prayer stall. But he felt the presence of Our Lady. Suddenly, her icon shone with a blinding light. She was so beautiful and so brilliant that he couldn't look upon her. was absolutely astonished and filled with so much love for God. Ξέρω 
ξέρετε πόσα σκόμματα και ηρωνίες υπέφερε δεν έβρισκαν τίποτε στη ζωή του να τον κατηγορήσουν Do you know what it is to bother no one and yet be bothered to not steal and yet to be stolen from to bless and be cursed to show mercy and to be reviled Για την ακρίβεια της εσεστροφίας και της φιλοπονίας μη έχοντες τι να κάνουν εσκέφτηκαν να τον κατηγορήσουν γιατί δεν κοινωνούσαν να πάει στις τράπεζες και τον βρήκαν αντιέ και τον κατηγορούσαν ως πλανεμένο For them to come and chastise you for no reason to call you deluded all your life Κύριε Καρισόλους προσέχετε το σαν τρελός, πλανεμένος δεν έχει καμιά σχέση μαζί με την παράδοση μας τα άκουε ο Γιώργοντας και όμως πως ευχόταν συνέχεια για αυτούς To find out the truth is not what they say. Elder Joseph foresaw the future of his disciples in the Garden of Our Lady, which in his own time was going through a barren period. He joyfully declared, Now! This late in the day, God has brought us these young monks. The whole of Athos will lean on them. If there was a poton birgo, and also a poton ranoculi, and as grostos to Yeronda, Kiba Themis, Kazumazaki in the run, Dropala. A watcher Ephraim, who had a boss, they hear the Kuma. They hear a shift to the Katakaru and the car. To the end, I am the Kabu. His disciples, who were later to become the elders Joseph, Ephrem, and Hararbos, made an enormous contribution to the increase in the numbers of monks on Athos. Initially, the holy monastery of Philotheo was rehabilitated under the guidance of Abbot Ephrem. Thereafter, in 1979, the Brotherhood of Elder Hararabos rejuvenated the Holy Monastery of Dionysiu, and at the end of the same decade, the Holy and Great Monastery of Atopedi was settled by the Brotherhood of Elder Joseph. Δεν ήρθαμε εδώ εξ επιλογής δικής μας και προτιμήσεως. Εδώ στην πραγματικότητα ήρθαμε εν διά του τάδε λέγει Κύριος. Επομένως η ευθύνη μας είναι απέραντες εάν δεν πειθαρχήσουμε σε αυτή την υποταγή. Ο ίδιος γέννησε τέκνα δυνατά, τα οποία παρέδωκαν στη διακονία του Αγίου Όρους, ανέλαβαν μοναστήρια του Αγίου Όρους, εξομολόγησαν χιλιάδες και αναρρίθμιτες χιλιάδες ανθρώπων, διδάξαν την Εκκλησία του Θεού με πάσα λεπτομέρεια την πνευματική ζωή, στηριγμένη και εμπνεόμενη από το παράδειγμα και από τη δασκαλία του Σιού Γέροντος Ιουσίβ. Six monasteries one Cenobitic skeet, and many cells on the holy mountain. Eighteen monasteries in the rest of Greece, six in Cyprus, sixteen in America, two in Canada, and one in Italy, have Elder Joseph the Hesychist as their spiritual father. This charismatic elder marked the beginning of a revival of monasticism which has continued to this day. Ο Γέροντας Ιωσήφος Ιχαστής είδε ότι η υποτακτική του δεν μπορούσαν πλέον να τον αποκριθούν. Αυξήθηκαν και όλα στη συνοδεία, πήγε και ο Παπαχαράλαμπος, έγινε μια συνοδεία κανονική, ήταν έξι άτομα που ήθελαν προμήθειες, ήθελαν πράγματα, ότι όσο σκητικά και αν ζούσαν, χρειάζονταν να έχουν κάποιες προμήθειες. Αυτό σημαίνει ότι κάθε μέρα ανεμοκατεύαινα, Αγιάννα, μικρά Αγιάννα και αρσανά της Αγ ε, όταν είδε ότι άρχισαν και οι μοπτήσεις ο Γέροντας Ιωσήφ, τότε είπε ότι τέλος. Προσευχήθηκε, αλλά με πληροφορία και έφυγε για την Νέα Σκήτη. It was September 1953 when they set off with their few belongings and went down to the house of the holy unmercenary healers in the middle of New Σκήτη. Στη Νέα Σκήτη πήγαν πρώτα στο Γέρο Θεφύλας, στους Αγίους Αναργύρους, που είναι μέχρι σήμερα εκεί, αλλά ο Γέροντας Ιωσήφ δεν μπορούσε να ζήσει σαν τόσο πολύ πυκνό κατοικημένο τόπο. Με τα δεδομένα της εποχής βέβαια πυκνό κατοικημένος. Και τότε στη δυσκολία ανευρισκόμενη 
ε, ανεκάλυψαν τα καλυβάκια που ήταν πίσω από τον πύργο. Που δεν ήταν όπω είναι σήμερα, βέβαια, τότε ήταν μικρά καλυβάκια. Και τα ζήτησαν από τη μονή του Αγίου Παύλου, η οποία μονή τα έδωσε προθύμω, και έτσι πήγαν εκεί και αναπαύτηκαν εκεί οι γεροντάδε μα. Και μετά, βέβαια, την κίνηση του γέροντα Ισήφ, δέχτησαν τα μεγάλα αυτά που είναι σήμερα. Restoring the buildings to make them habitable was especially painstaking. The old custom of the elder of not having anything of their own was more than ever a trouble for them. At first, Papa Haralabos lived in a shack next to the big elder, who was living in the house of St. John the Forerunner with Father Arsenios. Elder Joseph of Atopedi lived in a shack a little further down, towards the sea, while Papa Ephrem lived for about two years with Elder Theophylactos at the unmercenary healers. Then, later, after 1955, in today's house of the Annunciation. It was really a man who was born in the house, who was born in the house. Γι' αυτό και μίλησε εν περί των θείων και αυτό που διαβάζουμε και αισθανόμεθα πολλές φορές στην καρδιά μας να πυρφω, έτσι να είναι να, πυρ, να έχει πυρ να έχει ας πούμε έτσι, μια, μια, ας πούμε, έναν πόθο για το Θεό να έχει δάκρυα κλπ είναι διότι αυτά τα εγγραφόμενα αυτού του ανθρώπου είναι χαριτωμένα διότι είναι αυτός είναι λόγοι καρδίας χριστοφόρου καρδίας But the consequences of the exhausting trials were becoming increasingly evident. His persistence in not relaxing his personal regime and the additional hardships of the moves completely wore him out. Two serious illnesses, one directly after the other, brought his earthly life to an end. A few days before his repose, he wrote to a spiritual child. I wrote to you that the breathing difficulty was from my heart ailment. But in truth, underneath it, it's from God. Because when I was young, I strove voluntarily, but now we have to strive involuntarily in order to have a greater reward. I don't go out. I don't go anywhere. I shall die here with my fathers. On the 14th of August, 1959, he was preparing himself. On the day of the feast of Our Lady, the Mother of God, the Dormition, he departed this life in order to pray for the whole world in the next. Στον ουρανό 